Oh well, I was gonna go outside, but the sky exploded. I think it's raining too hard. I'm using a Minolta 28 millimeter F2.8 Telesaur vintage lens. It's definitely not waterproof, not even close. Uh, I think I'm gonna wait and go out a little bit later. It's actually a perfect day to shoot because it's cloudy, it's gloomy. It's my favorite kind of weather to shoot video, but I wanna use this lens because I wanna talk about and I'll start the video with this, then I'll continue it later. But if I were to teach composition, or if I were to teach any kind of filmmaking, to be honest, which I never would because I don't really feel, you know, qualified to do that. But if I were to do that, I would tell everybody to shoot in different aspect ratios. Because when you do that, your composition, your framing has to be really intentional. And also, I would recommend a camera like the Panasonic S5 because it allows you to put those lines in your monitor so you can actually see the frame of 4x3, anamorphic, you know, 16x9, whatever. I would highly recommend that, a frame on your monitor. And so I'm going to shoot in 4x3 for this video because I'm really interested in 4x3 uh, aspect ratio. Uh, one of my favorite films called Ida was shot in that aspect ratio. Also, The Grand Budapest Hotel, which is an amazing film. Uh, I'm looking at this beautiful rain. It's crazy out here. Um, so anyway, I want to shoot 4x3 because I think you really have to look at what you're doing. You have to think about it. You have to stop. You have to be present. You have to like really look at your environment and think about the story that you're trying to portray, what you're trying to tell, what you want to share. And you can't just like throw it out there. You know what I mean? If you do, it's going to look like dog doo-doo. But if you really think about it, it can look beautiful. So let's wait, go out a little bit later, um, and I'll show you the difference between dog doo-doo and when every frame can actually look like a painting. So, all right, I'll see you in a little bit. Let's get past this rain first. I kept looking, kept trying, I kept hoping, but it just kept raining. So I'm just going to talk about aspect ratio right here in my bedroom, my little studio. You see DaVinci Resolve behind me. Um, and it's actually a little chilly in here. Like it's been raining all day and I'm a little cold. So let's talk about four by three aspect ratio because I personally think that whether you're a beginning filmmaker or an advanced cinematographer, I think it's a great idea 
to switch aspect ratios quite often, to put yourself out of your comfort zone, to do things that you're not used to, that are not just easy for you, that are not just, you know, normal and don't shoot 4K all the time or even cinema 4K or, you know, like get, get into some stuff that you're not used to so that you start seeing things in a different kind of way. Because I think when you do that, you become a little bit more intentional with what you're trying to show. Like you become more meticulous with the frame. You try to make every frame look like a painting. It's like an opportunity. You know, it's kind of like interchangeable lenses. Like every time I change a lens, I feel like I have new eyes in my head. Like I'm seeing the world in a whole different way. You know, I mean, I always shoot, I shouldn't say always, but I generally shoot with two focal lengths when I'm working on a project. Like for my movie that I just finished shooting, I used two lenses for the whole film, basically, a 28 millimeter and a 50 millimeter full frame. And I'm about to do an anamorphic project with anamorphic lenses. And I'm gonna be using a 35 and a 75 and that's it. Like I don't really need anything else, you know? And, but when I do change those focal lengths, when I go from 35 to 75 or from 28 to 50, it's like, wow, I'm seeing things in a whole different way. Things feel different. You know, the vibe is different. It's like, there's just something about it that, that changes my perspective. And I think it's the same thing with aspect ratio. You know, like you're used to looking at the frame in a certain kind of way, and then all of a sudden everything's changed, you know? And by the way, and I got nothing to do with, you know, Panasonic personally, there's no connection or anything like that. But um, I highly recommend these Panasonic cameras. I have an S5, but I know the S5 Mark II, the S1H, the, I think the GH6, the GH5, like I think pretty much all the Panasonic cameras have the opportunity to frame your monitor. Um, there's a setting, so like I'm shooting in four by three, I actually have physical lines. Like I don't have to put tape on my monitor so I get to frame exactly what I want. So when I get to post-production, I have gotten it right in camera. I don't have to move things around. I don't have to crop. I don't have to do anything because I'm shooting for what I am intending to do. And that's the thing, like, you know, shooting four by three is much more, you know, like claustrophobic feeling than shooting anamorphic, you know, two, two, 2.39 to one, like wide scope, you know, like way, way wide or 4K or cinema 4K or whatever. It's like, it's a whole different perspective than four by three is more, I mean, I hate to say this because I'm not a fan, but it's more like social media in a way. It's more like vertical. It's like a box. It's old time movie like. As a matter of fact, that's what they shot old time movies in mostly was four by three. And so, one of my favorite films, Ida, is shot in 4x3, and it feels like a 4x3 film, or, or like, you know, it feels like, like it's in a confined space, like they have to tell this story in a place that's a little bit more, you know, close in. The characters are closer to one another. The, the, the people are closer to their environment. Like, everything is closer. Now, obviously, you can still control what the frame looks like within that four by three framing. Like if I use a wide angle lens and I'm a hundred feet away from the camera, I'm still going to have that look of loneliness or disconnect or whatever you're going for when you're shooting a hundred feet away or 50 feet away or whatever, you know, but still it looks a lot different than when you're shooting on a wide frame. Um, I just think it's a great opportunity to communicate differently, you know, and, and to be intentional with why you're using that um, aspect ratio. I think, you know, obviously the most, one of the most important things to do when you start a project is to think about how do I want to present this to people? You know, how do I want it to look? How do I want to share this work? Do I want it in a box or do I want it really wide? You know, do I want to shoot manual lenses and vintage lenses, anamorphic? Do I want chromatic aberration, a little bit of distortion? And do I want it kind of gritty? Or do I want like these uber sharp G Master lenses where everything is perfect and clear and looking modern? Like you have to decide what kind of project are you doing? Now, the other thing that's kind of cool is I think as a cinematographer, you're kind of like, you know, you're like a, a filmmaker is like a musician or an actor or any other kind of an artist. You're trying to develop your style, like your look. 
I think it's really a great opportunity to develop your skill to the point where people will look at work and go, oh, that's, I know who that is, you know, like, there's no question that's Spike Lee's work, or that's definitely a Steven Spielberg film, you know, that's Rock Wilk, that's what I, that's my goal, that's what I want, and so, personally, I like more gritty look, like I work with manual vintage lenses, these old lenses that are really flawed, but flawed in a way that I like them, like I don't have to use a black pro mist filter, I mean, I always have an ND filter on my camera, on my lens, but, I don't have to use other lenses that a lot of filmmakers use. But then again, I'm not shooting weddings or I'm not working corporate gigs where people require this ultra, like really sharp look. Now, I do have one sharp lens. I have a Sigma 28 to 70 f2.8 because I thought it would be a good idea to have one good zoom lens and one autofocus lens just in case I needed it because the autofocus on my camera is actually pretty good. But I digress. I'm not talking about any of that. We're talking about aspect ratio. We're talking about changing the way you look at things. We're talking about being open to change, being willing to change, you know, being, being willing to look at things from a different point of view. Oh my God, this is kind of cool because this reminds me of life and the best part of life, being open to a different point of view, being open to the way other people see things, you know, to grow your empathy Wow. So like using different aspect ratios could help end racism and misogyny and homophobia and anti-Semitism and xenophobia and all the horrible things. Wow, I'm not even kidding. That's kind of cool. Like learning to look at things in a different kind of way, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes, putting your eye, somebody else's eyes into your head and your heart and expressing yourself in a way that you didn't intend to express yourself when you started or expressing yourself in a way that you intended to express yourself but using a perspective that you did not generally use and you know think about it like once you master all these aspect ratios then you know what perspective is appropriate for what particular story you're trying to tell is it a dark story? Is it a somber story? Is it a claustrophobic kind of story? Is there a lot of anxiety? Or is it, you know, a happy story, just an open, big, you know, wide angle kind of story? You see what I'm saying? Like, you get to choose. You get to master each different way of doing it. And so people will receive the work in exactly the way that you want them to. You know, your aspect ratio is what is going to best support the text in your screenplay, the dialogue, the actual story, you know, it can enhance the story and make it better, make it more appropriate, you know, make it look correct. Now you could probably get away with telling any story in any aspect ratio, but I think it's awesome to have the option to choose something that you think is perfect for the way you want to tell it. It's like putting a frame on a painting, you know. It's like getting dressed for an event, you know. It's like anything else. It's like, you know, making your food look the way you want it to look when you've cooked a meal for somebody you really care about. It's all these things that you get to choose how you want to express yourself, how you want to represent how you feel in your heart. That's everything. So today I'm working with 4 by 3 aspect ratio. You know, I think no matter what aspect ratio you're working in, you have the opportunity to try to make every frame look like a painting. That's the magic of filmmaking. That's why I love going to museums. You know, I love looking at paintings. I love looking at work on the wall and just to really study them and to see how they've told the story because you can apply that to filmmaking. That's why I love to look at photography books because looking at these frames that are just sitting there, if you really take the time to look at them and see the composition and see the depth of field and see the colors and see how the artist has chosen to share this work with you, it really is of great value to somebody who's also creating work. You know, you can be inspired by that. You can learn from that. You can be, you know, you can be changed by that. You can grow from other people's work, from other people's perspectives. Brings me back to that. You can grow from other people's perspectives, from other people's beliefs. You know, you can grow from the way other people look at the world. You know, it's not always all about you. 
Wow, that's a real digression. Is digression a word? I have digressed again. But anyway, see aspect ratio, it brings up a lot of stuff for me. It makes me feel like it's a necessary part of storytelling to be able to change, literally change the environment. You know, like I'm a, a solo theater artist. There are certain theaters that are perfect for certain shows. There are certain stories that, you know, obviously you could tell any story in any space. Like I could perform on the street in a car in a gigantic theater with 3,500 people. It doesn't matter. Everything in between. But there are spaces that are perfect, you know, just perfect. Like if you watch a baseball game and you go to a place like Fenway Park or Camden Yards or Yankee Stadium, like, well, not the new Yankee Stadium, but old Yankee Stadium, like baseball is like a vintage sport. It's an old time sport and it just looks better in an old stadium, in my opinion, you know, like if you hear jazz, you want to hear it at the Village Vanguard in a club where Miles Davis played and Dizzy Gillespie and Charlie Parker and people like that, Sarah Vaughan sang in this space. It's a small, gritty space. It's not, it's not the same as, say, the Blue Note. And the Blue Note's a great club, but there's a difference. You know, there's a difference. There's a difference between playing basketball at, at Madison Square Garden and at some arena in Oklahoma City. It's just different, you know? Like, the Knicks belong in Madison Square Garden. Don't make any Nick jokes. I think you understand what I'm saying. Like, I want to try to house my story in the perfect space. So when I start working on a film, the first thing I think about is how do I want it to, where, where do I want it to live? How do I want it to exist? You know, how do I want people to receive it? That has a lot to do with it, you know? So that's going to determine whether I'm going to shoot anamorphic because I want it really wide and I want all that kind of distortion and all the beautiful imperfection of, of anamorphic, or I want to maybe shoot four by three. Maybe I want to make it black and white. Maybe four by three is perfect for black and white because it's kind of reminiscent of an old film. There's so many, you know, the possibilities are endless. That's the beauty of being an artist. Everybody will choose what they feel and whatever you feel is perfect for your story. That's the thing. You're trying to figure out what's perfect for you because then you are giving yourself the opportunity to share your story in the best possible way that you know how to do that. And then you just put it out into the universe and share it and then it's up to everybody else how they're going to receive it. It's, it's not even your story anymore. It's, it's got nothing to do with you anymore. You created it. It's your offering to the world and now it's ours. But I think the source is really important. Where did it come from and why did you make it like that? That's really important. And that's a, a gift for the artist to be able to choose that. Like, why am I making it like this? Why do I want it to look like this? What am I trying to say? Why is my story going to be safe in this space? Be powerful in this space. Be clear in this space. Be beautiful in this space. Why? That's what you have to decide. That's what you have the opportunity to decide. So, yeah, aspect ratio. It seems like it's just a little thing, but for me, it's a spiritual thing. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Happy choosing. Happy choosing. Happy choosing. I don't know. I never heard that before. Happy choosing. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. I'm going to stop right now because now I'm just rambling. All right. That's it.